MMOs are kind of really boring. My entire life I've heard nothing but stories of people saying they get so obsessively addicted to them, missing out on class, their own weddings, landing the role of Superman, and the premise of a gigantic world that me and my 500 mates can all travel through together sounds so exciting and fun and then I try them and… This is it? What? World of Warcraft, RuneScape, even beloved Disney classic Club Penguin. Rest in peace. I've tried them all and yet I've never been sunk in. That was until Final Fantasy XIV. Which is odd because it very much is an MMO and you do just spend a lot of time pressing numbers on a keyboard and it shares a lot of the same dumb things I didn't like about those other games. So what possibly on this green earth does this game do? How did it capture my attention and trap me in a room and steal my money via a monthly subscription? Um, well my friends played this one so. Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn is a big gigantic MMO where you play as the Warrior of Light and have to fight the evils that threaten the great land of Eorzea. Or something. But before you can get into any of that, you have to make your character. And this is a process that people can spend hours and hours on. Not just on the seemingly endless plethora of customizable options for your in-game avatar, but also in the imagined backstories many people spend so much time creating. Really using all of their heart and crafting this vessel to feel fully immersed and present in this world and fantasy setting. And then I made myself a cute girl and called myself Snug Girl, because I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> Snug Girl? Get it? Get it, Snug Girl? So Snug Girl was thrown into this cart with some drinking moogles or something, and immediately you're loaded with the story, and here's the thing. I love stories in games, I'm a bit of a slut for it. There is just nothing like getting fully lost into the world of a video game and having its characters, stories and themes just wash over you in this beautifully unique experience that can only really be found in this medium. And yet in Final Fantasy XIV I could not give less of a shit about it. It's just endless, dry, boring text boxes which is sometimes cursed with really bad voice acting. The Astola! Pray! Forgive us our delay. Minfilia! Ida! What took you so long? Well, it's nice to see you too. The first half of a Realm Reborn story is so dull and uneventful and nothing feels interesting. It's like scientists concocted the most efficient way to keep you disengaged. Oh my god, Snuggo showing an emotion, you know it's serious. I'm usually so hooked on stories in games, but here... I would honestly just skim read as quickly as possible, or even just skip the dialogue completely. Snug, have you unlocked uh, the next one? Um, escape, skip cutscene, yes. Yep. Jesus Christ. Just unlocked it then. Seriously, if you put a gun to my head and told me to tell you what happened at all in the first big chunk of this game, I'd say Yishtola is very cute and please pull the trigger. I was getting kind of worried. I was beginning to think that even this, the critically acclaimed JRPG MMO with a free trial up to level 60 including the award winning Heavensward expansion blah blah blah, that even that couldn't make me like MMOs. So every week I would just show up to play with my friends and just dick about and not understand how anything worked and I sort of felt like I was missing out on the fun. UNTIL! One day my friend told me about a grand casino in the sky called the Gold Saucer. And unironically, this is where everything changed. The Gold Saucer is home to a giant assortment of minigames where you can earn an exclusive currency for exclusive rewards only sold there. It's got chocobo racing. Please, 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 yes! This dumbass card game. Yoshi P, can you fucking nerf green hands? Piece of shit park called Leap of Faith. Oh my God. And my baby girl, Yojimbo Bimbo. He summons this bamboo and you've got to avoid it. And then this dog comes out. And if you're sneaky, you can steal these bits of money. And then there's this random shuffle cup section. Oh, fuck you, that wasn't fair. Fuck this RNG. The gold saucer sells a wide collection of prizes, including this bunny girl outfit. And I know it's like a clean thing to buy and everything, but it just looked really cute, okay? So I started grinding at the mini games every week, slowly racking up my gold saucer dollary dues, hour after hour, until finally, bam! It looks even cuter on me! Yeah, but that's the thing about gambling. You think once you've got it all, that the sensation will be quenched. Back in those days, a cute bunny outfit was all I needed. But then, I saw it. The axis of my destruction. 
For Genesis to mount down would spiral into this golden, brightly lit hell. Oh my god, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Okay, let's do the maths. I need 2 million gold saucer coins to get the Cactuar mount. If we complete all the challenge log requirements, which ask you to complete 3 minigames, or win 10 chocobo races, or play Lord of a Minion one time, that seems oddly easy. Oh, this sucks. I get it now. So if we add all of that up, which is 3,000 plus 1,500 plus 5,000 plus 8,000 plus 5,000 plus 8,000 plus 5,000, it equals 92,000 magical gold saucer dollars. So if we do that each week, it should take about 21 weeks, which is about five months. And there's another problem. Some of the challenges on here are very asinine and frustrating. So we can just scratch off win 10 chocobo races and participating in two Domon Mahjong matches? Bro, fuck Mahjong. So that takes us down to $79,000 a week, which would then take about 25 weeks or about six months. No! But there are other ways to make money at the gold saucer. No, oh my god, no, no, not like that. Every 20 minutes there is a gate, which is an event like Leap of Faith, Yojimbo, the blowy guy saving this chocobo, or God forbid the boring ass Air Force One. Oh. Completing these gates will give you some money. If it's Leap of Faith and you collect all the trophies successfully, you'll nab 4,000 MGP. Save the chocobo chick in Cliffhanger and you'll get 3,000. If you hit everything perfectly on Air Force One, you get 4,000 MGP, but accidentally hit one bomb and you embarrassingly have to wait on the rails until it's over and lose a great and those are the predictable ones. Your Jimbo Bimbo's The Slice is Right is a randomized gauntlet with high risk and high reward. If you survive every round and collect a pile of money, you can make 11,000 MGP. However, that is very hard and I only managed to do it twice. In reality, you're most likely to get like 4,000. But it is possible, and I've never seen it done, but it is technically possible to grab two golden piles before getting hit by the dog and surviving to the end and getting, I think, around 12,000 MGP. But that's silly, so we're ignoring it. Then on top of that, there's the weekly lottery where you get three chances to guess the week's lucky number, with each number you getting in the right place, scoring you more and more money. Realistically, you're only probably gonna get three bouts of 1,310, but you will occasionally get a fourth prize. And there's also a mini lottery too, but that sucks and I hate it. I don't do that. Then lastly, there's the fashion parade, which if you follow a community guide every week, you're guaranteed to get 60,000 MGP. Okay, but let's say I spent one hour a day each week doing some extra grinding. Well, you're gonna make about 12,000 MGP from your three gates. 12,000 times seven is 84,000. Now these gates take about five minutes to do. So in the surrounding 15 minutes, you can play these mini games, which get you either 10, 15 or 25 MGP. The average between those three is 16.67 MGP. Seven goes into 900, 128.57 times, which means every 15 minutes, you'll be making about 2,143 MGP. Times three for the hour, and that's 6,429. Times that by seven for the end of the week, and you've got 45,003. And really quick, if this math doesn't make any sense, I dropped out of it in high school. Now let's add all of that up. There's the 84,000 from the week of gates, 45,003 from the minigame grinding, 79,000 from the challenge log, 60,000 from the fashion show, and 3,930 from the jumbo cackpot consolation prizes. And all of that equals 271,933, our weekly gold saucer gains. And to get our coveted 2 million, that will take us a little over seven weeks. So time to get on the grind. I became a fiend, spending every playing minute in this casino, figuring out that the challenge log resets on Tuesdays at 7pm Australian Eastern Time. It's like my entire purpose within the game was to scrounge up gold source of money. Oh, uh, thanks for the rat. Ugh. And then finally, after many, many, many hours of blood, sweat and tears, I got it. This is the best moment of my entire life. Also, I'm a cat girl now, I changed halfway through. Am I addicted to this game? And that's how it gets you. I'm not saying it's exactly the gold saucer that will rope you in, but the game feels like this steep, slippery slope where it's so whatever at the start, and then suddenly you're hooked. You're grinding away through the MSQ, doing hunting logs, doing your daily dungeons with your friends, participating in the festivals and events, shopping for cute outfits. Oh my God. Okay, sorry, pause the video. I gotta do a fashion haul. What? 
But it's just fun, okay? And at this point, I was just having so much fun playing the game. Even if you avoid the main story quest, there is so much stuff in FF14. It's like a never-ending sinking hole of playability. There are the many dungeons to raid, where you and a group of friends pillage through and do hero stuff and chat shit or be silly. Jesus. <laughs> Snug, you are a treasure. <laughs> oh, really? There are a million different classes to play as. My favorite so far being the Bard, because you get a whole wide array of instruments you can play with your keyboard. So anytime I got bored, I just go put on concert after concert after concert. There are a bunch of festivals all around the year, including this dumb fucking piss ass fucking tower event where you have to park up the stupid. Yeah, like, oh! I, I, I... oh my god. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes! Oh my god, yes! Oh my god, yes! I take it back, I hate this game. This particular event was summer themed, so me and my friends all got our summer glams on and just kind of hung out beach style. And at these events, you can also win cool prizes like this monkey. <laughs> It gives me very King Kong vibes. God, I wish she was me. I love is stronger than a golden banana. Yeah. Okay. And if you somehow get bored of all of that, you can spend hours and hours working on your drip. Like my friend who made himself look like a Starbucks employee. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. What would you like? Hey man, I'd love a um an iced latte. Is that would that be alright? And if that's not enough, the community themselves put on events all the time. There was this giant one we went to called Lunacon, which had this massive rave. It was so fun, I danced to a Twitch DJ, and I played rock, paper, scissors to this guy and told him if I lost, he had to be in the video, so there you go, man. I'm true to my word. And the community in general, incredible. I feel like every other video game's online user base is a cesspit of slurs and insults and awful smelly people. Put some deodorant on. Then in 14, everyone in the game is so lovely, creative, and just nice. I've met so many friends on here, having long chats into the night, or them gifting me cute clothes, or helping out with quests. One time, me and my friends were doing a foot race across Eorzea, and then I ran into this girl called Helena and asked her if she could just help me out in defeating some monsters so I could run through the area. But then she dropped everything she was doing and helped me run the entire way across the world, all the way to the finish line. Like, isn't that really nice? Like, oh my god, thanks. You just keep running into these great groups of people. Like, look at me and these 13 cat girls I found. <laughs> cat girl world domination will soon be complete. <laughs> The player base is so full of creativity and funny memes, and there is a real sense of community. And also, everyone is really funny. She's <laughs> kind of like a little mustache. <laughs> and I was having so much fun doing all this stuff that getting through the boring parts of MSQ was actually doable. Was it amazing? No. But it did pick up in the second half. When the Scion's base gets attacked, or after the wine and cheese quest, I don't know, whichever comes first, the story finally gets into second gear, and with a little bit more intrigue than, ooh, talk to the three fairies. At the very end, the stakes have never been higher, and you go to the Praetorium and fight the big bad guy, uh, Gaius? Gaius? I didn't really pay attention to the story, did I? For Palpatine, like, trying to stop the lightning is like when you try to stop pissing. Hey, uh, Master, can you, can you stop midstream? Uh, no, <laughs> it's like pissing, Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that that made me laugh. And then you meet him, and he has this big dramatic speech that you cannot skip. Tell me for who you fight. And then, ARR's story is over. And it's bad, but the worst is definitely behind you. Post ARR is so, so much better. It's got some stakes, some action, some consequences. This guy does a flip. There's a very hot ice lady. Yes. Who is she? I oh! She's bad, but she's also bad. I you know would I mean? not. Fucks hell. I don't want to fix her. I want to make her worse. If she stabbed me with her icy eyes powers, I would say thank you. I wanted to hold my hand in the supermarket. <laughs> 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 And at the end, everyone kicks the bucket in this really dramatic and eventful finale setup that leads to the next expansion. Except for Tataru, she took her vacation days just a week before all this happened. Hee <laughs> hee, lucky timing, X3 round. Look, the story has problems, but I'm not going to act like I was totally blameless in my inability to engage with it. Her upset face is so funny. <laughs> 
But the stuff at the end, especially post ARR, was very intriguing and I'm so excited to play more of Heavensward. Cause from what I've tasted and what I've been told, it just gets better and better. Mayhap one day, but not yet. What? Concert Is that fucking Alvis? When it comes to MMOs, I get it now. They're about the multiplayer aspect. Which sounds so obvious to all of you, I'm sure, but as someone who bays almost exclusively in single player driven narratives, it just took me a while to readjust to the fun and comfort that comes from hopping on with your buddies and having deep combos or just shooting the shit. That's kind of badass. Yeah. yeah. Why would you want to be yeah, pulled but the out? Yeah, the fucking human body is not a fucking efficient machine for you itself, let alone a as a fucking... battery. I do not care. I would rather suffer. This is why you do not have the resolve to play Mahjong. I almost, shit. I almost spat tea all over my fucking monitor. <laughs> and I love hanging out with my buddies in this game each week. And if you guys are watching, thank you so much for the last year and a bit. It has been so much fun and thank you for putting up with me. It actually team. pained me when you skipped all of the Grahatia's dialogue. You skipped Grahatia's dialogue? <laughs> but that was my thoughts on FF14, A Realm Reborn. I'm currently a little ways away into Heavensward, and I don't know, if you guys want to see me continue talking about the game, please let me know. And if you don't, I guess I just won't then. Hmm. But what about you? It's so exhausting being so self-centered and talking about myself. Please, I want to hear about you and your experiences with the game, if any. Please leave a little comment down below. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and stay snug. See ya.